Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, wherever you are in the world. This is Navlet on the This and That channel, and a very welcome back. Today, we're going to be looking at the original man who did pay a shortfall on his house that was foreclosed on in South Africa. His name is Michael Tellinger. So I'm just going to play the video and let Michael tell you what he did of my extended uh, struggle with the banks in the Supreme Court of Johannesburg, I have come to learn a great deal about this subject and found a lot of interesting information that you will only find when you actually have to stand and represent yourself in the court against what I guess could be called the highest paid lawyers in the world that represents the banks and the banksters. One of the most important things that I've found, and the reason I'm doing this, by the way, is because I get hundreds of emails every week from people around the world asking me about the promissory notes to explain uh, about how to use the promissory notes and so forth. So this is why I'm doing this video, so I can put it on record for once and everyone can look at this and learn from this and, and be, be informed, as informed as, as you can be from what I'm going to share with you, because I'm going to try and share as much as I can with you and show you examples of the promissory notes and how they work, how to deliver them. So, um, firstly, understand that what banks do is completely and utterly criminal, okay? If you still think that banks are respectable, honorable corporations and companies, then you're still mistaken. Everything that banks do in today's world is basically a criminal activity, and the bank, global banking industry is the largest organized crime syndicate in the world. They are the ones that are, that are behind creating the laws that they force through our governments, whom they control, creating the laws that are then imposed on society, that control the judiciary, that are, that are upheld by the judges. And often the judges are just very ignorant about what it is that they're actually upholding. So sometimes one can't even blame them. But sometimes, like in my case, it becomes very evident that the judges are paid off by the banks especially in the case that we had against Standard Bank in South Africa, which became a very high-profile case and connected to the Ubuntu Liberation Movement and the Ubuntu Political Party, and it started getting a lot of heat. So uh, sooner or later, uh, the judge was paid off to pass or hand down a fraudulent judgment. The only way that, uh, that I could protect myself is to learn from that experience. So in other words, I lost the property that I was uh, in court for, and it was auctioned. And uh, I, then what happens is, once you get a judgment against you, because remember that you can't really win. We can't really win against the banks in the court of law. Because as I mentioned, the court and the law is set up to uphold the rights and protect the interests of the banks and the banksters. So you can't win. Although there have been a few minor wins in various courts around the world, the major wins will not come um, until I don't know when. But the reason for that is that if we had a major win against a bank based on the arguments that, that we pose in the court, that I pose myself, the fact that the bank has, that doesn't have the original contract, and without the original contract there can be no hearing and no court case, a simple fact that should really precede any court procedure uh, from, uh, the, you know, from going ahead. And, um, the fact that the bank is no longer the owner of the property because they sold the contract to a third party and therefore they can't come after you for money that you supposedly owe them, money that they never lent you because they remember they create the money out of thin air. But to cut a long story short, one of the very important things that I learned was that banks accept payments in the form of bills of exchange and promissory notes. Now this didn't come from me, it came, it was information that was spontaneously volunteered by advocate Shem Simon, who represented Standard Bank. This is in my third, I believe my second or third hearing in the Supreme Court of Johannesburg. And he just suddenly blurted out to our surprise, for some reason that still baffles me, that 
Standard Bank, which means all banks, accept payment in forms of bills of exchange and promissory notes. And I suddenly went, oh my goodness, this is very important information. Because if I had known this, I would have been able to do something about it long before I got myself into the, the court and had to stand there, defend myself against the fraudulent and, and uh, criminal arguments of the banks. So, what I then went and did is I spent quite a lot of time with our legal advisor, Raymond Dix, and we looked at the Bills of Exchange Act, the lawful act that guides the financial industry and how money works and how money is created and guides the entire financial sector of our country, of Britain, of the United States and so forth. Every country has got their own equivalent of the Bills of Exchange Act. In South Africa, the Bills of Exchange Act comes from the British Bills of Exchange Act, which I believe is from 1822 or 1882, 1882 I think it was, and ours is just a slight bastardization of that British Bills of Exchange Act, suited, slanted towards the needs of the people of South Africa or the needs of the banks. Uh, that govern and control the people in South Africa. So, we created what we now use as a standard promissory note. And here's a basic example of it. We created a very nice, fancy-looking promissory note. Remember that all the bills in your wallet are actually, let's say, hundred pounds or hundred dollars. It's a bill. It's a hundred-dollar bill, right? So just like, and it's a promissory note. It's supposed to be a promise to pay. To pay what? To pay a hundred dollars on demand or it's, it, it's become a very gray area, actually. So what we really, in essence, doing is we're not trying to find a, a clever way to wangle ourselves out of debt or whatever. We're using the laws and the system that was created, the corrupt and fraudulent system created by the banking fraternity and the banking cartel to exploit and abuse and enslave humanity. We're using those same laws in our own favor, and somehow... It seems to have worked. In my case, and the reason I'm sharing this with you, because I have now paid Standard Bank close to or just over 800,000 Rand with four different promissory notes from about June 2013 until the 12th of December, uh, to, or was it to 12th of, of October, um, uh, 12th of October uh, 2014. So over a one and a half year period, I've paid the bank close to 800,000 Rand in promissory notes that I created. And this is, as I showed you, this is the basic standard promissory note. Now, what's important about it is the information that's, that's written on there. To make it look really fancy, this promissory note is available on the Ubuntu Party website. You can download it and, and use it for yourself. There's a blank version of this available with text boxes. So you can just click on the text box and fill in your own details and your own information. What you're going to have to change for, for your respective countries is this little thing here that says those two lines at the top that say... Tender in terms of the Bills of Exchange Act 34 of 1964 as amended up to Bills of Exchange Amendment Act 56 of 2000 and also in terms of the settlement um, settlement in terms of the High Court Rule 45.8a. This is in the South African High Court Rules. Now, the United States, England, Australia, every country will have their own High Court Rules. Now, the High Court Rules are the very strict rules that basically control the conduct uh, in the High Court, the way papers must be served, the way they must be filled in, the way the headings must be done, and all and all the stuff. Now, as a layperson, we don't know the High Court rules, and I had to teach myself all these High Court rules when I represented myself with the aid of a lot of very amazing people. The, the outcome is that we now know, I've learned all this stuff at great expense, as you now know, um, and four years of blood, sweat and tears and a lot of stress preparing myself for facing these banksters and criminals in the court of South Africa, of Johannesburg. Um, so, the, there's some very basic information on this uh, promissory note. Firstly, it's called a promissory note. Then there's a space that you need to create your own code, the, the promissory note number, like the, the number on your bill, on any dollar bill or pound, you'll see there's a number, okay? Well, you make up the number, because this is your note, so make up any number that's relevant to you, right? And then you write that number in there. Now, then what you do is you create a little 
uh, index like this one here. As you can see, there are four entries on this index, and these are the four promissory notes that I've paid. So every promissory note that I pay, I write on this index along with the index number. So I write the date, I write the name of the recipient, and all four recipients here are Standard Bank of South Africa, Standard Bank of South Africa, right? And then the, the note number, and that note number is that number over there, so that you have a record of what is what have you what you've paid out and what notes you've created because now you're creating value remember banks work with negotiable instruments negotiable instruments get their value from our signatures the moment that i create this every bill every invoice every statement that you sign in the bank the moment you put your signature on that you have turned that 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 piece of paper into a negotiable instrument because your signature creates the liquidity and the value in that piece of paper so it turns it into a liquid negotiable instrument and so this is what we're creating here. this promissory note becomes a liquid negotiable instrument with which the bank can trade and that therein lies the interesting trick that we've encoded in this promissory note which I'll explain to you now so there's your promissory note index with all the promissory notes the number and then the amount that you made the promissory note for and um, and then just my own notes that it was the standard bank and then the case number and so forth uh, this one this last one that I paid is for the auction shortfall so in other words when they auctioned my house the shortfall on the price of the property was about 500,000 Rand right half a million rand and then the bank still comes after you to make you pay that shortfall for the property that they auctioned i mean that's how criminal this thing is it is insane it's pure insanity and only we can get ourselves out of this so so there's your index now let me show you the promissory notes so that's what it looks like printed out on a normal piece of 80 gram bond white paper in a color printer very fancy looking promissory note and then it says here the promissory note was issued by what was it issued at waterfall boven and pumalanga date 20 november 2014 amount 367,202 rand and 67 cents and then you write it out like you would on a normal check and then it says this certifies that michael julius tellinger my id number hereby promise to pay standard bank of south africa and then in brackets the holder the full amount specified on the note for value received it's critical that it says that for value received so that there is an exchange of some sort that's supposed to take place here that's also a protection method for yourself so you can say if you haven't received any value for this note then there can be no no exchange going on so and then it carries on here terms and conditions and this is crit critical that's the little terms and conditions and then date and signature the date that you create this note and the signature your signature in blue ink this is critical i'm going to come back to the blue ink again now this ter the terms and conditions here i'm going to read out to you but you can see it on the promissory note uh print out on the on the word document that you that you can download of this and it says the following and you're going to once again have to change this just click on the text box and change this that uh, certain areas that might not apply to you uh, but it should be generic and this is what it says the payment will be made in monthly installments of 500 rand per month on the seventh day of every consecutive month until the obligation has been fulfilled until the obligation has been fulfilled the obligation stated herein okay we're not saying that we're going to repay or pay the full amount we use very specific words until the obligation has been fulfilled because ultimately no money has ever been loaned this whole thing was created out of thin air you were conned and suckered into signing a contract that basically turned you into a, a dead slave for the rest of your life on home mortgages most of us right until the obligation has been fulfilled this and then it gets even more important the payment can be obtained by the holder the holder of this note which is the bank now because i've given it to the bank and it's the holder or if the bank hands the note to someone else that someone else becomes the holder in due course these are all legal terms that you learn as you go through this process so the the payment can be obtained by the holder 
at 17 Zazim Road, Waterfall Boven and Pumbalanga, that's this address. So you're making them come to you to fetch the money. There's no obligation that you have to go to them to pay them. You make them come to you to fetch the money. Okay, that's your right. And, um, and then it says, I hereby give permission to the holder, the bank who holds this, or if they've sold this note to someone else, which they most likely will, because with your signature on there, You've given them a liquid negotiable instrument. All they have to do is sell it on into the markets, the stock exchange markets and the bond markets in the world. That's what you've done, right? And that's what they trade with, with bills of exchange, negotiable instruments. You see how this thing gets really, just really wicked what they've created here. So I hereby give permission to the holder and or the holder in due course of this promissory note to use this note in any way necessary as a negotiable instrument to be financially traded on means they can trade with this note this negotiable instrument that you've given them to be financially traded on whereas such trade shall terminate the obligation herein so basically I'm saying that if they sell this note to a third party, that I'm no longer obligated to pay them this amount because they no longer are the owner of this note and they can no longer come after me. So what have we done? We've given them an option to come and get this money from me on the seventh of the month after they receive this, this promissory note from me. If they haven't received, if they haven't raised an objection within seven days, that means they've accepted the note. Even if they raise an objection, they need to raise an objection to say, we don't accept your payment, in which case you tell them, well, this payment is, is, is the final settlement and it's delivered, which according to the bills of exchange means that the, con the, the, the deal is concluded. Okay, and they need to raise an objection in the court and take you to court to say to the judge that they don't accept your form of payment. They can't just say, we don't accept your payment. They need to start legal procedure against you to say, we don't accept your payment because this payment is legally sound according to the Bills of Exchange Act. You're exercising your right to use, to use promissory note and Bills of Exchange to pay the bank. This is also very important. Please do not use these kinds of bills of exchange or promissory notes rather. Do not use these promissory notes to pay other people or to pay shops or to pay other businesses because that's not the intention here. They're just normal people like you caught up in the same trap and the con by the banking fraternity. So only use this, and I have to stress this very, very loudly, only use promissory notes with banks and government institutions because they are ultimately the instruments of the banks. Okay, if you use it with other people, you're going to get yourself into a lot of trouble. Don't do that. So, if the bank does not come and get this, the money, the 500 rand every month, after the 7th of the month, because it stipulates here, that they must come and get the money from you on the 7th of the month, of every consecutive month. If they don't fetch it on the 7th of the first month, after you've delivered this note to them, you've assumed, and I've assumed, that they have sold the note. And therefore, they're no longer obligated to get the money from me or allowed to get the money from me. That means I have no longer any obligation to pay any money to them. So, therewith, my obligation has ended. And this, I believe, intelligently structured promissory note based on the laws that govern the bills of exchange has now turned into a liquid negotiable instrument and you've settled the amount outstanding to the bank so just to show you how i do it first of all i print okay <clears throat> i'm going to leave it there i will put the link to this video in the description box below the reason why i left it there is because michael goes on to show you the technique that he uses to do his promissory note however stuart and jez from here in the uk have found a different way to get these promissory you notes know, done, which is using the universal postal union mechanics, okay? Which is a lot easier than what Michael had to do. He had to go to all these different places, but I will leave the, the link to this video in the description box for you to watch it in its entirety so you can see what Michael did, um, what Michael did, 
um, in South Africa. I hope that opened your eyes. That is where I'm going to leave it for today. This has been Navlet on the This and That channel. Please do not forget to like. Please do not forget to share because sharing is caring. Please do not forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I'm uploading again. And comment. I do like to read your comments. Have a blessed, blessed day. Mwah!